Chimere is a world defined by flora and fauna harvested from Earth. Since our late Devonian era, organisms were periodically brought from this distant planet where they independently evolved in this new context. The known world, the realm surrounding the portal where many civilizations have been established, has had such frequent harvests in the past 15 million years or so that it boasts an unprecedented level of biodiversity with extreme regional and niche partitioning. The rest of Chimere is still populated by Earth's life, but lacking regular waves of invasive species means that their ecologies are much more conventional. To Chimerans, the portal is a two-way passage between their world and ours. A strange artifact of eldritch magic. They call it the whistling door or shrieking gate for the strange humming sounds it emits from its horseshoe frame. It is a device that is the greatest legacy of the first children, a fallen civilization that mastered the endemic magic of the planet. Although most Chimerans simply accept the reality of their strange and dangerous world, some are quite intrigued by the how. Others have lost their minds in the why. Although many Chimerans presume so, the portal is not the creation of the first children. They simply built a device to control an existing natural phenomenon. We will discuss this device in the next episode. Today, we will be covering the portal as it evolved on its own. In its natural state, the Great Portal is a massive cloud of magic. It is just one of the many swarms of unicellular organisms endemic to the planet. This one sent out satellite swarms to collect compositional data nearby, then the main hive would replicate it to optimize their habitat. One of these swarms, in what is now the known world, sent its satellites into the stars hundreds of millions of years ago. Most of these traveling swarms died or were lost to time, but one landed on a planet with organic life. Our planet. From there, it began to harvest plants and animals, which the hive replicated back home. By this method, in the geological blink of an eye, the planet was terraformed, dominated by plants that the portal preferred to feed upon over the endemic purple algae, with animals and fungi quickly following suit. You can learn more about this initial process in my first full episode on this channel posted a year ago, What is Chimere? This initial terraforming harvest, which happened during our late Devonian, was hardly the last. Collections of more life continued at a steady rate at around once every few million years ago, all from the same region. Over many millions of years, this satellite on Earth made satellites of its own, and clouds of Chimeran magic spread throughout Earth, steadily harvesting from different regions and ecologies so that the portal in the known world could fill out its many budding ecosystems, such as forests, wetlands, shallow seas, deserts, and mountains. As the ecology of the known world stabilized, the harvests slowed. No harvest occurred for almost 40 million years. Chimere developed a wide range of clades unique to the planet, now called the First Dynasty. Unfortunately, this set the stage for Chimere's first mass extinction. With the impact of an asteroid, at around the time of our Middle Permian era, 90% of all life on Chimere was wiped out. With a few fossorial and aquatic exceptions, nothing larger than a small dog survived. What followed was a dramatic spike in harvesting as the portal attempted to repopulate its world. When Earth suffers a mass extinction, it is invariably the meek who inherit the Earth. Small generalists are always better at enduring hard times and changes in the global context. The portal harvesting from Earth put a spin on this situation. Instead of waiting for small generalists to become large predators and specialized herbivores, it copied them from Earth. As soon as its foliage and ecology began to recover, the subsequent 10 million years brought a whole new cast of mid to late Permian flora and fauna that quickly dominated this clean slate world. Although some isolated regions of these megafauna couldn't reach, instead developed into new clades from the small survivors of the first mass extinction. These isolated areas didn't really matter to the portal. Its territory was repopulated and thriving once more, 
and shortly before the end Permian extinction, another golden age occurred, and the harvesting lulled. This pattern continued on, dynasties arose, endured for many millions of years with minimal harvests, and when they collapsed, the portal once again collected organisms from Earth to stabilize its territory. These spikes bring all the dangers of invasive species from disease to extreme competition, which then require more harvests. It often takes 5 to even 20 million years of harvesting spikes before a new dynasty is established. The slight drop in biodiversity can trigger harvest, which in turn brings new competition and disease. An arid period might decrease the wetland populations, and the portal brings in new species which might finish off animals already struggling to survive. Ironically, the portal's effort to bring in new fauna to stabilize usually results in localized extinctions that further destabilize, which is why these periods of fluctuation take so long. The known world is currently in one such harvesting spike, and has been for the past 15 million years or so, following the conclusion of the Tyrant Dynasty, the longest and latest of these Golden Ages. When the portal on Chimere senses a disturbance in the ecosystems of the known world, it tells the portal on Earth to harvest. For reasons unknown, perhaps to promote biodiversity, the Earth portal sends a cloud to some part of Earth that it did not venture to in the last harvest, which then dissipates into smaller swarms and hunt a range of flora and fauna. This process may theoretically be to collect from a range of niches, but it is quite an imperfect science, and sometimes a disproportionate number of a certain organism are gathered. It might be trying to avoid a certain niche if that is already occupied in the known world, or overwhelm it. Sometimes it gets overzealous and completely exterminates that animal on Earth in an eldritch rapture. The number and diversity of organisms seems somewhat connected to how many have disappeared in the known world, but only loosely. Sometimes a harvest is only a few hundred individuals from a few species, other times it's thousands or even millions, especially in the case of social smaller fauna. The harvest can be fairly localized, as with the first African harvest of the most recent series isolated to a few hundred miles, whereas the harvest in the Middle Pleistocene spanned from India to the Pacific Ocean, from China south to the top of Australia. The timeline of harvests is also highly variable. Some harvests only take a few years, others span thousands. The time doesn't seem linked to the density of animals harvested, as with most aspects of the portal, its reasons are not well understood. The portal on Chimere can replicate organisms within a range of a few thousand miles. It strives to place organisms in a similar habitat as they occupied on Earth, but as I'm sure you've caught on by now, it is imperfect. For something that so precisely replicates organisms that memories are retained, this ecological imperfection can seem at odds. The leading theory is that because of the sheer complexity of ecological regulation and control, the portal instead opts for a try three options and hope one works approach to balancing its territory. This is reflected in the high diversity in the known world, and the results speak for itself. Chimere is never short on megafauna. When a harvest actually occurs, the cloud of magic approaches its prey from the sky. It envelops a target using their hive mind for a comprehensive understanding of the organism as it is consumed atom by atom. The process is assumed to be excruciating and ends in death. When the animal is replicated by another cloud on Chimere, this copy is so exact that they have their memories intact, although the memories of the actual process are fuzzy if present at all. Some think that this is the portal intentionally replicating with minimal trauma to give the organism the best chance of survival, but this may simply be our own bodies trying to cope with a horrific process. As most who study the portal don't think it is as considerate as such theories imply. In large part because of the forest cultivation efforts by the titanosaurs, Chimere is generally warm and stable. This means that organisms harvested from tropical and subtropical regions, or generally in times that Earth is warm, tend to do best, whereas temperate and cold-adapted species often struggle, 
unless they can instinctively migrate south to colder habitats, an option generally only available to marine animals. Although the leading theory is to promote species diversity, which the portal appears to associate with health and success, it is not known why harvests are done from certain regions of Earth. Some of them seem quite futile, even cruel. For example, the harvest from northern Eurasia 800,000 years ago may have brought many marine species that flourished, but most of the terrestrial animals were adapted to a cold climate that had no analog in the known world. Many iconic Ice Age mammals quickly died out, overheated and vulnerable to predation in part from heat exhaustion on top of the typical disorientation many freshly harvested animals feel. The mountains and highland prairies of the western continent afforded a sanctuary of sorts for these animals, in part due to the cold winds that northward currents bring from the polar oceans and the foliage being unfavorable to dinosaurs that dominate the warmer lowlands. Cave bears and lions found success in this colder region, where they quickly went extinct elsewhere in the known world. Some, like Paleoloxodon, were able to transition to warmer forests than they were used to, without much difficulty, because their recent ancestors were subtropical. Megaloceros is still found in these mountains, changed little from their ancestors and struggling to compete with the giant Servavitus, but those that adapted to the hot, housy prairie are dramatically more successful, with the prairie elk making up some 95% of the surviving descendants. This pattern continued, with fluctuations between harvesting spikes and Golden Age plateaus for stability. This pattern continued, with fluctuations between harvesting spikes and Golden Ages of plateaued stability for around 30 for around 370 million years. Then, the natural cycle of this portal abruptly concluded with the expansion of the first children, a civilization of tiny archaic humans that had mastered the endemic magic of the planet. They built many wondrous artifacts, most notably a contraption which contained and controlled the portal. They turned it into a gate that they could open and close, turning what was once a one-way ecosystem stabilizer into a door that allowed interstellar travel between worlds in both directions. In our next episode, we will explore this doorway, its creators, and how it is utilized by modern Chimerans today. Until then, stay fantastic. Cheers, folks!